so children in, in China are allowed to be children when they are not in school. Water, pressure, a lot of homework, lots of homework. That is why I'm saying that there is no creativity. Alright guys, welcome to another video with Tony Lao Sui broadcasting to you from some of the Chinese cities. Well, in this little episode we're going to talk about the current situation here in China with the foreign teachers, with those who are teaching language mostly. Well, I gotta tell you again, I am teaching math, algebra, geometry. Well, uh, of course, you know exactly what is happening in the world, you know, from where exactly everything started from. Wuhan and so on. Right, what is the current situation with the language teaching, with the teachers, with schools and so on. You can see some students are going to the school. Now it's about 2 o'clock already and it's time for the afternoon classes. Students are everywhere. This is a primary school right here in front of you guys. Now there are so many teachers are stuck abroad in their home countries or during their vacation having fun during the Chinese New Year. But they are now stuck in these countries because they are not allowed to go back, go back to China. Now people are not, foreigners are not allowed in China anymore. You probably know that from the Day or Law 86 because starting from March 28th, foreigners are not allowed in China anymore. Right. And uh, because of this, a lot of schools right now are in huge demand. There is a huge demand uh, for um, Wai Jiao. Wai Jiao in Chinese is a foreign teacher. Wai Jiao. So huge demand. Yes. Everywhere, no matter where exactly in China. If you speak some Chinese, you can go to any school, you can easily find a job. Yes, of course, if you are a native speaker. For a non native like me or some others, it's quite hard to find, but if you teach some, uh, some, something specific, some subject, it's still simple for you. But if, it's a, if it comes to the language teaching, English language teaching, then you have to be a native. You have to be a holder of a, well, native English speaking country's passport. That's right. All right, students are everywhere. They're heading to their afternoon classes and to their teachers well of course in chinese uh, schools right now we can say easily say that uh, every single school has a foreign teacher some schools have uh, three five foreign teachers in our case in my case we have uh, five teachers at the moment right but this is a foreign language school but in typical chinese public school well has at least one teacher or two teachers sometimes even three teachers i do some part-time take some part-time at another school it's a not a well not a, an international school and in this pretty big school four thousand four yeah it's about four thousand students primary middle and high school all together and there are more than yeah four thousand students and more than 10 foreign teachers that's right right what let's talk about creativity let's talk about this thing that the Chinese people are lack of lack of creativity I'm always saying that and you guys know very well how this Chinese growth happened it all happened it all started from from what from faking goods right from making fake producing fake goods and this is truth we all know that nowadays uh, the quality of the Chinese goods is growing which is good but um, you know going back in time we know that all started from fake goods okay so creativity um, Chinese people used to copy everything they used to take any patent from any country uh, to copy sometimes they did find some Chinese citizens engineers or some I don't know some 
uh, chemistry or physics professionals, they would find a job somewhere abroad. They would uh, use their uh, citizenship, local citizenship, green cards, etc. They would find a job with some um, factory. They would copy some materials from the factory and then, then they would do the same here in China. Well, this is again true. We all know that they, a lot of people did that. Therefore, therefore, we used to think that the Chinese uh, products, the Chinese goods, everything is fake. But now we can say that, first of all, this is not a very bad thing because, well, everyone has a right to improve the environment in your country, the conditions of, the, of everybody's lives, everybody's life. So, um, speaking about this creativity thing, it all comes from the education. Yeah. Доброе утро всем. Время половина девятого. So after a while in playing a frisbee, we're here in the bench sitting in the park. Creativity thing. Right, just like I told you guys, in China, uh, their thoughts, we, we have to understand, you know, this culture, the people, not everything, but a lot of cultural things are destroyed in China. But anyway, in order to understand more their mentality, local people's mind, you know, we have to understand the foundation of uh, their educational system. So, um, yeah, in China, there is a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure uh, for students. Students are basically uh, children in China don't, don't have any childhood. So, children in, in China are allowed to be children when they are not in school. They are, well, I mean, before the primary school. When they are in kindergarten, they are children. They're playing, they can hang out here in a, in a park or at some other places. Uh, yes, they are allowed to be children. But when it comes to uh, first uh, step of their educational system, primary school, everything changes. Water, pressure, a lot of homework, lots of homework. And uh, yes, incredible order in Chinese schools. That is why I'm saying that there is no creativity. And right, let me tell you in more detail way. So in China, you know, I'll show you probably the park better. So in China, first step of the Chinese educational system, the primary school, the children are studying from 8 or 7.50 or 8.15. Mostly it's, let's say, let's take the average 8 o'clock until 5 or sometimes 5 30 depends on a school so that is how the primary school works so first three grades of the primary school well just like i told you as for middle school and high school all right let me tell you something more about the primary school students well children right after their well they're done with their studies uh, on a daily basis they are going to some additional lessons extra lessons uh, evening classes, uh, Chinese calligraphy, mathematics, um, English of course, uh, some, it, well, when it comes to some additional hobbies such as uh, football, boys are playing football or sometimes basketball sections, there's no volleyball in China, uh, playing ping pong but ping pong mostly at schools and this is not a serious thing, um, playing uh, piano or violin and yeah, basically that's it, that's it. Uh, and some also, uh, some are going to uh, dancing schools. But it looks for me, it all looks like uh, all Chinese parents are willing so uh, deep-heartedly uh, that their, ch their children must play piano or violin, mostly piano. Uh, I heard that so many times, well, a lot of children are, well, can play piano, but they always say we hate it. We hate it, but our parents think that this is the beautiful ha hobby. You have to do that. So they're forced to go to this schools and study piano, something that they don't like. Right. As for the middle school and high school, this is the most interesting part. When it comes to this part of uh, the educational system, there's a um, schedule, pressure, and homework. These are three whales of the system. So first of all, schedule. We have to understand that in the middle school and high schools in China, uh, children 
at schools are starting from 7.50, again 7.50 to till 8.15, that's, uh, no, wait up, it's 10 minute or 15 minute uh, lesson in the morning, uh, starting from 7.50, 5.0, and they are, this is called morning reading, reading, they are reading either English or some Chinese or whatever, vocabulary or math, uh, but, well, I heard so many times they're just reading some English words vocabulary but anyway there's always this subject no, not really a subject it's just time for morning reading just Zhao Du in Chinese all right then 8 15 first lesson starts uh, it lasts for 40 or 45 minutes depending on the school depends on the school then a second lesson a 10, 10 minutes break second lesson then uh, right after second period in the majority of the Chinese schools uh, 90%, 80%, at least 80%. Uh, after the second period, uh, there is a big assembly. Then, when all students and teachers would assemble at the main square um, of the school, they would hear out some uh, announcements from the principal or from their headmasters, head teachers, and uh, they would listen to some motivational speeches and etc. Every single day or sometimes if there is nothing to say, there is nothing to in, to announce, uh, they would just do some physical exercises. Uh, some classes are running, some are doing this exercises, listening to the same music every single day and uh, repeating the same exercises. And you know, it's, it's kind of <laughs> amazing seeing that thousand or two thousand or 4,000 people are doing the same exercises, exactly the same, listening to this music's pace, exactly with the same pace, with the same rhythm, uh, same speed. Amazing, amazing how they are well trained. And um, as for the schedule, okay, right after this uh, morning exercises or morning announcement, after the second period, there's a third period that starts approximately at, at 10.20 then third period, then uh, fourth period, again 10 minutes break, and right after fourth period at 12 o'clock, depends on the school, sometimes it's 11.50, sometimes 12, at uh, 12.10, uh, there is a two hour or 2.5 hour uh, break, lunch break, there's uh, in this two hours break, two hour break, there is one hour for lunch itself, and then right after that, after that hour, um, students would uh, go to their classes or to the dorms, dormitories. So, um, a second hour of this break, lunch break, students are not allowed to do anything outside, they are not allowed to be loud, and everything must be silent. Basically, that's what's happening during the lunch break. Then, after uh, this break, so it's fifth period and sixth period, and seventh period, then 5 uh, 20, 5 30, sometimes 5 o'clock, depends on the school. Uh, students are having their dinner break, dinner or supper break. So, in the evening, again, well, now there is no silent hour, it's just uh, 1.5, mostly average number is 1.5 hour break, and that's when they are having their uh, dinners, and uh, some of them would. Uh, shower take a shower or uh, well yeah mostly that's it well of course and of course during the lunch and during the uh, supper time dinner time uh, also a lot of students are playing basketball football soccer I mean and uh, ping pong table tennis and etc and then, right, uh, there is then, yes, there is then. At 7 o'clock, uh, there is another, not a lesson, but it's a two hour, well, no, again, 1.5 until 8.30. 8.30, there is, um, in Chinese, it's Zixi. Zixi, that means self study. It's when they doing their homeworks uh, or any other assignments from their teachers, and there's always a teacher who would control them, um, control their being in the class, well behavior, etc. 
and uh, yeah basically right after 8 30 in the evening they are free to do whatever they want this is all right this this sounds just so terrible there's no freedom and nothing at all and this is guys this is middle and high school students can you believe it starting from 11 12 years old and until uh, 17 years old students in China they get programs you know this order this rules regulations a lot of things that they have to follow now they all wear facial masks they uh, always uh, you know they get checked body temperature all the time a few times a day there's a lot of things there's an there's a lot of knocking you know someone would knock on someone so so many restrictions and right after 8 30 well of course some of the students are going home but the majority of the chinese students are staying and leaving at the school's dorms that is why that is why they are so programmed and they are so tired of being in chinese schools of having this constant the non-changeable schedule this is crazy this is crazy exactly crazy the scale of this nonsense is insane and but at the same time it also brings some use because uh, uh, first of all the Chinese students are one of the most uh, smart in the world it's not easy it's not easy the Chinese parents are constantly telling their children that you guys uh, you guys have to you have to there is no other way. There is a fierce competition on the Chinese jobs market. So it's the only way to study hard and to be a successful person in the future. That's the only way. You know, I heard that many times from different students because they said that and they also mentioned that, you know, I, I made this survey as well. Uh, Chinese uh, parents are always beating their children, always. And I was at the beginning, it was like a joke. It sounded like a joke. To me and to some of my children when I ask them uh, so guys have you ever beaten uh, been beaten by the, 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 your your parents and someone even laughed at me it's like what, what the hell are you talking about of course of course sometimes even say even teachers it's well it's not the Western world but then you can see your teacher but here in China yeah right well well of course it's not uh, we're not talking about some uh, international school because in international students well, students in the international in international schools are paying a lot of money. Therefore, you know, uh, teacher would never raise a hand. But um, yes, in public schools it happened a lot. So I I did work in a public school, so I know what I'm talking about. And um, that's how it works. You know, sometimes I even heard the stories from one of my students. I heard that he said, you know, uh, he was 17 back then four years ago and he said you know uh, my dad told me if I would uh, have a girlfriend uh, he would break my legs I was like what are you talking about like, break your legs this is crazy right but yes this sounds normal in China because uh, that's the only way to control you know to in Russia Russian people say uh, it means to hold something in uh, in an in iron loaves that's right that's right and um, no I mean not right but that's how this how they work here operate and that is why that is why I'm telling you guys there is no creativity because they are everything is uh, sharp to be uh, aimed to be uh, for the Gao Kao Gao Kao is the high like high level uh, test well Gao means high and Kao Kao Shi test so uh, the most important uh, examination in China is Gao Kao. Uh, when uh, they graduate from the high school, they all have to pass this Gao Kao. Your life depends on it. That's why uh, everything is so serious. Serious. That's it, guys. So uh, what do you think about this? Please leave your comment, of course. Do not forget to subscribe to Tony Laoshe. And uh, if you want to see more videos from me, if you want to hear something or see something of course leave your comment about, comments about that you share your thoughts and uh, yeah please let me know what you think about my videos let me know if I um, sound or look more should look more understandable for you guys because you know this is my new experience uh, sharing with the English world on YouTube platform right that's it for today guys don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to push the like button 
and I'll see you now in the next videos, next episodes. Have a good time. Bye bye, everyone. Take care. Until the next time. Всем пока. Всем привет. Bye, everyone.